This man gruesomely killed two young men with a gun and attempted to kill four other victims. Identified as Michael Edward Keatley, the 52 years old former ice cream man forced the victims to kneel on the floor at their home in the community of Ruskin. He shot the first victim, racked the gun and continued shooting them repeatedly. According to his confessions, he carried out the horrific attack as an act of vengeance and revenge as he claimed that he fell victim of an armed robbery attack in January 2010, which left him permanently disabled. It is because of this that he decided to go on a killing spree. The two deceased victims were brothers who were identified as Juan Gitrin and Sergio Gitrin. Shortly, Fax is going to show you a heartbreaking footage of the victim's mother as she addressed the untimely death of her sons at the court. But before that, let's identify the other victims that survived the attack. This is Daniel Beltran, he was shot three times, next is Gonzalo Guevara, he was shot four times, and Richard Cantu, who was shot at the back of his head, finally. This is Raymond Galan, he was shot in the stomach. Now, let's watch the heartbreaking footage of the deceased victim's mother while she spoke at the court. But before that, kindly use this moment to support facts by subscribing to our YouTube channel and turn on post notification. You should also follow and interact with us on TikTok, Facebook and Instagram. I do have um, some next of kin as well as some of the victims that do want to address the court. Judge uh, Miss Casada, who's the mother of both of the deceased victims, is present and she will need the assistance of a Spanish interpreter. Do we have an interpreter present? We do, Judge. All right. Well, let's bring her and the interpreter down. What I'll do is I'll put them at the podium. I will allow you to, I'll swear them in, both the interpreter first and, and then the witness, and then I'll allow you to ask any questions or present their uh, testimony however you deem appropriate. Judge, I think she to make a address statement. the court, and we also have our victim assistant, Stella Carabine. All of them are welcome, and if they all want to kind of um, get around that microphone, make sure that the green light is on, on the microphone. All right, let me start with Madam Interpreter to swear you in um, to translate. Do you, accurate, do you swear to accurately translate from Spanish to English and English to Spanish in the proceedings this morning? Yes, Ms. Corsa, State Certified Spanish Interpreter. Ms. Corsa, thank you. Now I'm going to swear the witness in. Ma'am, if you'll raise your right hand, please. And if you'll state your name for the record. Paz Quesada. Ma'am, do you swear or affirm that any testimony you offer will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Yes. Thank you. You may put your hand down. I understand you'd like to make a statement today, ma'am. Yes. Yes. All right. You may proceed and remember that she is interpreting for you, so give her an opportunity to translate, um, so, so break it up so that she can translate. You may proceed. Well, my question to him is one that I've always wanted to ask him. Why did you kill my sons? And, and I wanted to ask what he feels, if his conscience is clear, or what does he feel if he's not um, sorry for what he did, remorseful for what he did? Me quitó la mitad de mi vida. You took uh, half of my life away. Me destrozó mi corazón. You, sin mis hijos. you tore my heart without my children. You destroyed my heart without my children. My children were the, the, only, the only people that I had. I love them with all of my heart. And I want to know, I want to know how you feel now that you've taken them away from me. Knowing that they were innocent young men that had never caused harm to anyone, and less to you. Because of you, I cannot be a grandmother. Because of you, I can't. Con they couldn't continue with their lives. 
ellos tenían mucho futuro por delante. They had a, a, a lot of, they had a big future ahead of them. ¿Cómo se siente con el daño que me hizo a mí y a todas las familias? How do you feel with all the hurt that you've caused me and all of the victims' families? Si no se arrepiente. I want to know if you're not remorseful. Esperé mucho tiempo esto y no me arrepiento no, de ver seguido por 12 años, más, más de 12 años hasta I've, el final. I've followed this for so long and I'm not sorry for having uh, followed, withstood through it all for 12, year, 12 years. Pero lo que más siento y el consuelo que siento. But what I feel the most and the, the, the relief that I feel now. Que nunca va a salir y no va a poderle hacer daño a más familias. That lastimar más personas como me lo hizo a mí. Is that you will never get out and you will never be able to hurt any more families or cause the, the hurt and the damage that you have caused me. Espero que nunca salga. I hope you never get out. I hope you never get out. Y que siempre lo tenga en su conciencia. And that you always carry this in your conscience. That's all I can't speak anymore. All right, let me see if the defense has any uh, question. Oh, no, no, no. Thank, thank you, ma'am. The other victims that survived and relatives of the deceased were also present at the court and they shared their grievances as well. Let's watch as they all spoke on the incident. He calls Frankie Cantu, he's brother to Richard Cantu. Mr. Cantu, if you'll come forward please to the microphone. Mr. Order, do you wish to ask him questions or him just simply make a statement? Just to make a statement, Judge. All right, Mr. Cantu, if you'll come up to that microphone and raise your right hand please. Do you swear or affirm any testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. Thanks, sir. You can put your hand down. I just want to know, how could someone do such a heinous crime to six innocent men? You know, it's it's hard to go through this 12 years um, to finally get justice for our family. Um, I, I, it's, it's, you know, the physical damage is always going to be there. With my own brother, Richard Cantu, he has physical damage. I see it every day. It's hard to see that, you know. Um, the, the emotional damage is always going to be there. You know, with 12 years, we've been waiting for this to, to come to, to where we're at now. And it's, you know, for my aunt, boss, she, you know, her two kids were taken away from her at such a young age. You know, they... You know, I went to school with them, and I, I absolutely love my cousins. You know, to see, to see this happen to that, it's, it's, it's unbearable. And I, I don't, you know, it's, even for the, the all my love families, the Ramon Galan, like, the time that it happened, it just, it was, a, like, unthinkable to have this happen to families and friends. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's it's a heinous crime out of hate and hatred, for whatever reason, and no family should go through this ever. And here we are, twelve years later, finally, hopefully, getting justice for our family. Uh, sorry. Oh. I have any question. Let me just see if the defense. Would... Thank you, sir. Ms. Doherty? Judge, the state calls Gonzalo Guevara. Gonzalo Guevara. If you'll come forward, sir, to the microphone. And when you're ready, if you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm any testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Thank you. Put your hand down. Actually, state your name for the record, please. Uh, Gonzalo Guevara. All right. You may proceed, sir. I really don't know what to say. I didn't write nothing down. I'm just going off of it. 
I just want to know why you took them, like you took two good people. You were a coward that night. You um, hurt so many people. You hurt this lady losing her two kids. We know what you did that night, and you know what you did that night. You hurt us. You caused so much pain to everyone involved in it. And the way you're showing yourself in this courtroom shows the person that you are. They say forgiving people helps you heal, but I can't forgive you. Um, you took two really good people away from this world that were doing the right things in life. And that hurts a lot. That's all. I'm gonna say. All right. Anything from the defense? Yes. Thank you, sir. Ms. Jody? Daniel Beltran. Mr. Beltran? If you'll come down to the microphone, sir, and when you're ready, if you'll raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm any testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I'll help you God, sir? Yes, sir. All right. If you'll state your name for the record. Daniel Beltran. All right. You may proceed. Well, It's all the damages and all the stuff that barely I just heard with with it. all that is true and all the damages that it did to me to to all my friends, especially to especially to the mother of the surgeon Juan. Like, um, I want to tell him though that I forgive you what you did because I know it's not you; it's the devil in you. And you should let go of that. You should ask God to forgive you. Because you ain't escaping none of his wrath. Not even the human wrath. You just heard. I just, I would just like to tell you to ask God to forgive you. Maybe you can find forgiveness and then live a better life. As to eternal life. So other than that, you going straight to hell, and I ain't escaping that. Don't matter how many years or whatever it is your sentence that they would give you, if you don't ask God to forgive you, you going to hell regardless. And I've been seeking for God ever since you did what you did to me, because I know He has a purpose that He left me alive. And I like to share that with you. Because, yeah, in order for me to get forgiven for what I did, whatever I have done, no matter what, what level it is, I know I got to forgive you in order for God to forgive me. So I forgive you. I care about my salvation and the way that I be in front of God. Hope you do too. God bless you, brother. That's all I can say to him. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Judge, that's all of um, the family members that wanted to speak and all of the victims. Finally, the judge gave his verdict on the case. Let's watch as Keatley was sentenced to life imprisonment. Um, go ahead, Mr. Keatley. Let me have you stand to receive the sentence. I know that it's, it's not a surprise that you're going to be sentenced to life today, but I do want to make a couple of comments. This has been a very long road and a very difficult case for a number of reasons, including the fact that it has been such a long road. I think that it is the oldest case that is on the docket in this circuit, but it has finally come to an end, and what it shows to the victims in this case is that justice is not always swift, but justice is eventually served. 
Nothing I can do or say today will alleviate the pain that you have suffered and the losses that you have suffered, but I do hope that you can find some peace in the conclusion, or at least the conclusion at this stage of this case after such a long road. I am going to adjudicate, if I haven't previously done so, I may have, I probably did adjudicate at the end of the trial. Madam Clerk, was he previously adjudicated? No, he wasn't. All right. Well, I will adjudicate Mr. Keatley at this time guilty on all six counts. I will sentence him to life in prison on each and every one of the six counts with a minimum mandatory of 25 years in each and every one of the counts. In Florida, life means life because there is no possibility of parole. So, Mr. Keatley, you will, barring any reversal on appeal, spend the rest of your natural life in the Florida Department of Corrections. I am going to impose all standard fees, costs associated with the um, standard uh, computation of those fees and costs. You will have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence entered against you. I will give you credit for every day that you have already served during this long road in the Hillsborough County Jail which was 4,559 days, but I'm going to add 30 days to give you credit for 4,589 days. Is there anything else from the state? Judge, you do need to announce formally on the record if those life sentences are to run concurrent are or consecutive. Absolutely right, and I am going to run them concurrently. Thank you, Judge. Is there anything from the defense? I'm going to defer to Mr. Escobar. Mr. Escobar. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we have been hired by the family to handle the appeal, and so we will file the appropriate papers uh, by Tuesday. Excellent. I appreciate you letting me know because there is sometimes we're not sure what's going to happen and whether we need to appoint the public defender or anything, so I do appreciate that. Um, and I have announced on the record that there are, are th he does have 30 days to appeal. Thank you, Your Honor. You're very welcome. Thank you, and nice to see you. Nice to see you. All right. Thank you. The fact that Keatley was a victim of an armed robbery attack that left him disabled, does that give him the leverage to carry out his vengeance and anger on other innocent people? Let facts know what you think of this case in the comment section. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe.